This feature is one of the most highly requested part of this release of Visual Studio Code, and that is search editors. What the heck does that mean, Brian? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Basically, when you're used to searching through the icon here, or you can bring up this view with the keyboard shortcut on Windows and Linux is Control Shift F on Mac, it's Command Shift F. It brings up the search view here. And then you might search for a term, like in this case, I'm gonna search for chat. I hit enter. All the results show up in this pane, in this little window sidebar here, and that's nice. But maybe you want more control. Maybe you need to get a better view of what the results are instead of just being confined into this area. Well, you can now click on the little open in editor option and that opens it up over here. <gasps> and so, well, what you can do from here now is you can look at your folder structure and then focus on your searching in the editor view now. And what we can do is we can modify how we want to see the results. So right now it just says what folder it's in. I can double click on the line here and it will bring me to that file. I go back to the editor and I could do that for each individual instance of the matching result from my search term and so on. I could collapse the ones I don't want to see and focus in the area that I want to be looking for this particular search term. In addition to that, I can switch the view to go from this current view in the editor to actually show the context of where that search term match is showing up. By doing that, I click on this little icon that's called show context here, these little bar graphs almost looking things. And now I can see the context around the search term in the file that it, the match is found. And I can choose how many lines I wanna show around it. Right now it's showing two, but maybe I wanna slim it down a bit and only show one line above and below this particular instance. And you can go even more, let's make it like 11. And oh my goodness, we got so many now, right? Another great part about this new feature is you can actually get more context within each search result by pressing and holding the control key on Windows and Linux or command key if you're on Mac and hovering your mouse over each search term match that you have. So in this case, this chat instance, if I hover over that, I can see more details there. If I go to this one, I can see more details and context about this match result as well. And the last thing I wanna show about this new feature with the search editors is that you can actually save your searches. So let's say you come up with a complicated regular expression that helps you find all instances of something that you need to refactor in your code base and your team is working through that. Well, you can save this. You just press control S or say file save and you'll notice it gets saved as whatever name you want and the file extension is .code hyphen search. So I save that within my workspace of my project and then it shows up in the folder explorer here, the file explorer on the right hand side. And I can check that in to my source control system and my team can work through this refactoring. And that's about it. Another feature that you might be interested in is being able to resize the windows and views within Visual Studio Code. These are considered or what are called sash corners and now they're draggable sash corners. So if I open up a bunch of files, let's go here, open up stream TS effects manager and let's say, I don't know, index. And I'm gonna move index down to here in the bottom half. And right here, this is a draggable sash corner. When you see the mouse cursor change to something like this icon, you can then drag it however you want. Ooh, right? So we always were able to do this here in the middle of two editors or multiple editors, but now you can do that between editors and other views, such as the sidebar view like that. And what's great about this is, when you have the terminal open in the bottom and you need to resize things a little bit with that, you can drag that sash corner too. All right, so another feature you might wanna check out is what's called column selection mode. And what this does is it makes the existing column selection support more discoverable for you if you have been struggling to figure out that you even had this capability within Visual Studio Code. So let me demonstrate it for you. Typically, the default behavior when you're selecting multiple lines of code is going to highlight things like this. And you notice I have one cursor here on line 10. What I can do now is let's say I wanted to edit multiple lines at the same time, I can switch to the column selection mode. The way I can do that is one of two ways via the selection menu and then choosing column selection mode. And you'll notice now that I have a few separate selections on multiple lines between line four and line 10, which gives me multiple cursors. So now I can say something like, const x, y, radius, diameter, and so forth if I needed to on multiple lines. So that's one way you can enable the column selection mode if you so choose. 
And that stays enabled from now on whenever I select multiple lines of code. So if I go through here again, you'll see it's multiple cursors now. You'll know that you're in this particular mode via the taskbar indication down here that says column selection mode. And if you click on it, you'll be able to disable the column selection mode that's currently enabled. Now I did mention there are two ways to toggle this mode on or off. One is via the selection menu, or you can bring up the command palette, control shift P or command shift P, depending on your operating system, type in column selection, and you'll get toggle column selection mode. And now I am back to the default behavior when I'm selecting multiple lines of code. This feature is going to come in really handy because I imagine you probably use the rename symbol or variable quite often and you have it such that it will update any files that are referencing that variable or symbol that you just renamed. So if I go and rename this one to uh, is sound effects enabled please. You can notice it updated the effects manager for me too because that's one of the files that's referencing this config file. So from there, maybe I made the mistake and I don't want that to actually happen. If I were to undo it before this latest release, it would only update it in this particular file. And now it's going to prompt me to update it in other files that are referencing the symbol. So I'll do control Z and it'll say, would you like to undo renaming this is sound effects enabled across all files? And I'll say undo in two files, or you could just undo in this file or cancel. Maybe you made a mistake. You didn't mean to, but I'm going to do undo in two files. And there we go, effects manager was changed as well, and the save was completed. All right, this feature is gonna come in nicely, especially when you're looking to refactor your code to go from using strings that are concatenating variables and strings together to string template literals. And what we can do now is if we do something, let's say like this, we're gonna console log like the port we're listening on, right? So console log, listening on port, and then you add in the port usually, right? And maybe you have some legacy code where you wrote that and that's the approach you used to take before string template literals were available or whatever your reasoning is. But now if you hover over this, you'll see the light bulb comes up and says possible fixes or you can press control period and it'll give you the option to convert to template string. I hit enter and it automatically converts to the back ticks, which is the template strings and then passes in the variable within the dollar sign curly braces like that. Really cool, nice, neat, nifty little feature to have there for refactoring our code.